Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Today I, I thought we'd take a look at uh, John chapter 1, uh, the verses that uh, Pastor Tyner uh, just read. Now, before I get into it, do you realize we are in chapter 1 and we're learning about the baptism, the calling of the disciples, and we're still in chapter 1. Uh, if you were to read through just even that first chapter, there's no Mary, there's no Joseph, there's none of the wise men, there's none of the shepherds. John just seems to be running 100 miles an hour to get to his point. And today we're going to look at that point. We're going to look at what do we think John's main purpose or main themes for his entire book. But John just le keeps leaving things out. Um, did you notice, and you guys I know have read your Bibles and looked at it, we go from baptism, what's supposed to happen to Jesus right after his baptism? He's ushered out into the wilderness and tempted by who? Satan. Oh, we're just going to skip that. John just keeps moving and plowing along because he wants to get to his point. We pick up here. Can you clear my background? I guess I didn't put the right cue in there. Thanks. That way, can you see it better? Uh, this is John the Baptist, uh, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. So we've got John the Baptist. He's out in the wilderness, and he sees Jesus, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God. It's got a lot of, of partakes. We talk about that at Easter, right? The lambs being sacrificed for the blood being poured out for the people. John has disciples. And we don't think about this, but back in the olden days, uh, when Jesus' this time, there were a whole bunch of people going around um, talking, and there would be disciples that would follow them. John has his own entourage. Uh, prior to Jesus, there were a couple other big guys that came in with revolts and stuff, and everybody kind of flocked and watched kind of what they were saying. Now, you're saying, well, that's a little odd, but we do the exact same thing. Um, have you ever got a favorite author, and you read everything they got? You want to know everything they're talking about, everything they're saying? Or maybe you got a movie star or an actress that you follow and you go, they're going to be the people that I'm always going to watch, right? Or what about news broadcast? You switch news broadcast? You're a Fox person, you're an Emerson, you're a CNN, you're a Washington Post, whatever you are, you only listen to one, right? We've got our person or group that we only listen to. And they're doing the exact same thing. They're following around. And so John has his, and he has his disciples. And two of his disciples heard him say this. And they followed Jesus. So these two disciples leave John to go to who John has just called the Lamb of God. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you seeking? Now, I got this in green. I got it different. This is one of the main themes of John's gospel. What are you seeking? This is why John rushes to get to everything, because he knows that everybody is looking for something. We all have these different things. Around then, they were looking for a Messiah. And they thought the Messiah would, had, would do different things. Uh, some of them thought that uh, because of the Roman government oppressing them, not having their own government, not having their own country, they were looking for somebody to come in and destroy the Romans. 
They were looking for somebody to come in and help them with all the different uh, laws and regulations and the church or the synagogue, I guess at that time, all the rituals. You had your own mind, your own thought. Each one was looking for something unique. And these guys say something, and I don't know. I, for me, this it doesn't really answer the question. I'll let you be the judge. And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Now think about it. Maybe, let, let, me, let me rephrase it, because we don't use the word seeking. What are you looking for? You see somebody out looking around, rummaging, and you go, what are you looking for? And they turn to you and go, where are you staying? Where's your home? Would that be the right answer? I don't know about you, but that's not the one I would have thought. I wonder if they were struggling to put the words what they were actually looking for. Were they looking for somebody to come in and destroy and to change the government to free them? Were they looking for something else other than a, a Messiah? What are they looking for? The reality is, I think every one of us comes here and we all have something we're looking for. You know, in the Christian church, there are people that come out, uh, come in here, uh, maybe they're hurting and struggling. Maybe they've got sickness and issues with their health or their finances. And they're looking for a God to be able to fix those things, to heal, to somehow give us extra money, somehow to give us all the things we need to take care of us. We're looking for a God to take care of just our needs. Some of us are coming here looking for a God to put all things to right. We come in here thinking the world is going blank in a hell, or in a, in a, can't even say that without going that route. You know what I'm saying. There you go. I can't think of it. I know that, yeah, well, I was trying not to say the word. <laughs> Try to be nice. My kids are here. The world's just going to kaput. And we want a God to come in here and to put everything to... Right. If the world would just get its act together, Jesus, if you'd come in here and take care of these problems, tell them how wrong they are. We're looking for a God to fix everything. Some of us are coming in here, we're broken, and we're struggling, and we're looking for a God to just say, everything is okay, I forgive you, I take care of it, go back out and keep living the life that you've been doing. We're looking for a God that would give us just this idea of I can live life how I want, and it doesn't matter, God's going to forgive me. We too come in looking for God with our own baggage, with our own struggles. The world, when Jesus came, they weren't expecting to be God to be like that. And I think we would fumble around, we'd say the kind of the same thing. Jesus, where are you staying? We wouldn't tell them what we're actually looking for because I think we realize that it's somewhat silly. We'd be looking around and realize we're missing the boat. The main theme that Jesus comes up is what are you actually seeking here? What is it that you are looking for? And John will answer this over and over again. 
This is where all the I am statements. I am the shepherd. I am the light. I am the truth. I am the way. He's talking about who Jesus is. He is the I am. The God in the flesh. He's saying, if you're looking for something, look for me. If you are hungry, if you are struggling, come follow me. Jesus, in the next part here, he says, he says to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. So they come and they follow him. And this is going to be Andrew, and we've got Peter, we've got these guys. So they're brothers, Peter being, which was Cephas, he gets his name in this context. And they are now following Jesus. What are you seeking? See, if you're seeking healing, and if you're seeking reward, and looking for security, you know, Jesus does come and he heals, and he does help out widows and cares for the sick and the poor and but that wasn't all he came for see he came to not just to heal our ailments and our aches and our pains but he came to heal the biggest broken biggest problem in our lives he came to heal our sins and he does that on the cross if you're looking for a God to put the world right, to put structure back in to the world, if you're looking for it in your way, you'll be disappointed. But if you see how Jesus comes, he came to restore order to fulfill the law perfectly. And because of that, he took on the law and he went to the cross and paid for it. In it, he completed it. He took care of the law on the cross. And for grace and for looking for mercy, he came and he picked us up and he said, you are forgiven. We just ate and drank of his forgiveness And he picks us back up and sends us back out in the world and says, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. What are you seeking? I quickly flip to the end of John at the end. And I looked at what Jesus' last word to his disciples were and i thought this is interesting because the one that we just read what are you seeking are the first words in john and the last ones follow me what are you seeking What are we seeking? I think we're seeking Jesus. We're seeking a relationship. And he tells us to follow him. To join him on our journey. To join with him as we move forward, trusting in his promises of forgiveness and grace of order and love and to simply just follow him and i know in the next couple of weeks we're going to be looking at actually this kind of concept over and over again as we looked at our building campaign we're going to be asking ourselves where is jesus taking us 
in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. We're going to be looking at these buildings as part of our mission to fulfill here. And our role is to just follow Jesus where he leads us. And our prayers are, as we look at this, that Jesus will make it clear as we walk forward, as we follow him. Because with him, we have the Lord of the universe, the creator, right by our sides, going with us. And that's a powerful message. So what are you seeking? We're seeking Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Now may the grace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again. Amen.